Hi, my name is Jamie from Chegg Tutors. Today I want to talk to you about shear, a really important concept in mechanical engineering, both in theoretical problems and in design of materials, and also experimentally when we select materials that need high shear strength. Over here is a diagram of the mathematics of shear. So initially, with these dotted lines, these black lines are parallel, but they're also the same length and right beneath each other. When a shear stress, this tau, Greek T, is applied, there's a certain deformation. The stress is applied in the direction, in the plane of the material, and it causes a parallelogram to form from this rectangle. Now, in these red lines, instead of being um, instead of being right on top of each other, the lines are still parallel, but they're displaced from each other. This one is farther to the right than this one. This is shear stress. When you apply a stress to a material in the direction, in the plane of the material, we could have easily applied it vertically to. Same idea. Some examples. If we have a paper that's cut with scissors, especially dull scissors, it is torn, it fails as a material because of shear stress. When we have reinforced concrete, what we're trying to do is increase the shear strength of the concrete, its resistance to failure by shear. Anything that's ductile fails in shear, sorry for the uh, typo there. So something like a metal or a polymer, something that's brittle fails by tension, being pulled, being pulled way too hard. We have to think about machine design too, not just an mater individual material, individual steel bar or grade of steel, but also how the materials are going to fit together. Very commonly in a machine, a solid round object, say that's spinning around, is going to impact something, or a solid round object is just that static is going to be hit. In that case, a shear will be applied to the round bar or the rod. A shear is going to be in the plane of the rod, and it's going to affect the shear stress of the rod, where the top of the rod is going to try and be moved in the direction of the rod compared to the bottom that stays fixed. To determine a very simple shear stress in two dimensions, we use the shear modulus G. This is usually determined experiment, or this is determined via a formula from the Young's modulus E and Poisson's ratio N. It's actually a Greek N, but that's harder to write. So imagine that this rectangle here is pulled. We have it in tension. It's going to, um, it's going to be longer, and it's going to be thinner. Now, the longer part, we measure how much longer it's going to get via Young's modulus E. So Young's modulus measures the deformation in the direction of the pull, in this case, the tens tension that we apply to the rectangle. The Poisson ratio still is me measuring the deformation in the direction perpendicular to where we apply the tension. So if we pull this rectangle and get this rectangle, the Poisson's ratio is measuring how much thicker or thinner the rectangle gets in response to this stress. We can find both E and nu, N, experimentally, and use that to determine the shear modulus. This is going to affect how we select materials. It's also going to affect how we design materials and design machines. Again, we want to think about what forces and what shear strain something is going to have and select an appropriate material. If we think that something is going to be very commonly uh, have a lot of tension, we want something with high tensile strength. If we think that it's going to be subjected to a lot of shear impact, for example, we want something that has high shear strength. So we have tensors and crazy math that we can get to describe shear, but we also want to think about the very practical and experimental part where you want to choose materials that are going to have properties that you think are desirable for whatever uh, things are going to happen to this machine or this building. If you're going to have a lot of impacts, you want high shear strength. If there's going to be pulling on the beams or 
you know, other kinds of deformation, you want to choose a material that's best for that. So engineers very much need to know about shear in order to understand how they should select and design their structures. Even, fluid, even in fluids, there is shear stress at the boundary, say, of a pipe, because there's friction between the fluid and the boundary of the pipe wall. So this friction is actually shear stress. So not only people who design buildings, structural engineers or civil engineers need to know this. People who deal with fluid mechanics, many mechanical engineers or more uh, theoretical physicists or mechanical um, engineers in the theoretical sense need to understand shear stress as well. This is not just something that applies to solids. Thanks for watching and more next time.